Hi and welcome to my OCR A level biology revision session with me Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at quantitative methods for using the Benedict solution. So let's just remind yourself about why we would use the Benedict solution. So if we're going to do a reducing sugar test, if we want to see if there's glucose, galactose, fructose, maltose or lactose present in a solution, we're going to do what's known as the Benedict's test. Now, the reason we use the Benedict's test is because reducing sugars can donate their electrons. So if there is no reducing sugar present, if we get a negative result, our Benedict's test is going to stay blue. If we heat the solution, our sample with Benedict's in a water bath, what's going to happen is that's going to result in a reaction occurring. And that reaction should give us a positive result if reducing sugars are present. And that would give us the coloured precipitate, which will go from a blue negative colour all the way through green, yellow, orange to the brick red, showing that there is a high concentration. So the colour change indicates the concentration and we can clearly see that, and that is qualitative data, the observational skills that we are using. Now, if we use a non-reducing sugar, like sucrose, we will need to do the Benedict's test and we will get a negative result. So remember, when you're doing non-reducing sugar and the Benedict's test, you are getting a negative result. The blue will stay blue, even when you heat it in the water bath. So what you then need to do is take your sample and you need to heat it with hydrochloric acid. Now what that's going to do is that's going to break the glycosidic bond between the glucose and the fructose, releasing those monomers. Now we've got our reducing sugar. We need to neutralize it. Remember acidity, hydrochloric acid is acidic. We want to neutralize our solution with sodium hydrogen carbonate solution. And then we're going to do the Benedict's test again. And what should happen is when we do the Benedict's test again, we should get a result which shows us that Benedict's is present. That shows us that reducing sugar is present. So therefore we've shown that our sucrose was hydrolyzed down to release our monosaccharides, which are reducing sugars. So when we talk about quantitative data, then we're not just talking about the color that we see. We want to turn this into a numerical value. And so we do that through using a colorimeter. So quantitative measures, the absorbance or transmission of light by a coloured solution. So obviously with the Benedict going from that blue colour right the way through to the brick red, that is where we're going to be using light being transmitted through or light being absorbed by the pigment which is found in our solution. Now it's important that you note when you use a colorimeter and you're doing a Benedict's test that you want to use a red filter. So it's important that the colored filter is appropriate for the solution that you're using. So Benedict's, you should know that it is a red filter. Now the more concentrated a solution is, the less light that is going to be transmitted through, therefore more will be absorbed. So it's important that you understand that the light can either be absorbed by the solution or transmitted through. So when you take a reading from your colorimeter, you will either be told the transmitted light or you would be told the percentage absorbance. So what we have then is a few things to note when doing a colorimeter test. We need to zero the colorimeter using distilled water to begin with. Why? That is going to reduce our systematic error. The more decimal points that we get with regards to our reading when we look at our transmission or our absorbance reading, the increased resolution we have. So we want as many decimal points as possible in our reading, therefore we are increasing that resolution. We always want to repeat and calculate the mean. So this is going to reduce our random error, our uncertainty in our data if we repeat and calculate the mean. 
So what's important then for us to be able to do? Well, if we want to do a colorimeter test, we want to do this with a known concentration of our solution. So we're going to do a serial dilution. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take 1% glucose solution and we have 250 centimeters cubed of our stock solution. So 250 centimeters cubed is our volume, 1% is our concentration. We are going to repeat a dilution to get known concentration. So we're going to take one centimeter cube of our stock solution and we're going to add a specific volume of distilled water. So here, I've got one centimeter cube of my stock solution. I'm going to add nine centimeters cubed of distilled water. I therefore have got one, one going in of stock divided by the total volume, which is 10. I therefore have a 0.1% glucose solution in my test tube one. That is what we call a tenfold dilution. I'm going to repeat this, but before I repeat it, I'm gonna mix well between each dilution for even distribution. So every time I'm going to add one centimeter cubed and nine centimeter cubed distilled water. I'm going to do the same each time. And with each time, what I am doing is I'm doing a tenfold dilution. I'm taking my 1% glucose solution and I am doing a tenfold dilution. So I've gone from one to 0 0.1 to 0 0.01 to 0 0.001. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I've got the known concentrations that I would like. So that's how we do a serial dilution. We're repeating these steps each time, adding a specific volume of distilled water of a stock solution so that we can get known concentrations. Now it may be that I want to do this, but this time instead of doing a tenfold, I've got an 8% glucose solution and I want to get 4%. So in this case, I'm going to do a ratio of one of the stock to one of the distilled water. So I've got 10 centimeters cubed of my stock solution. I therefore now I'm going to add in 10 centimeters cubed of my distilled water. So I've got 20 centimeters cubed of my volume. So 10 divided by 20 will give me that 0.5 five times that to the eight percent so I've got 0 0.5 times eight percent will give me my four percent and if I keep doing this 10 to 10 10 to 10 10 to 10 and 10 to 10 each time I am doing one of the stock and one of the distilled water now it doesn't matter if I do 50 to 50 and therefore I have a 100 centimeters cubed of my stock solution as long as I am doing a one-to-one -one ratio I will be able to dilute this down to 50 percent each time but what do I do if I want to get a zero dilution between two percent and one percent with increments of 0 0.2 percent well, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 2% and I need to work out so that I can get it to 1.8, 1.6, 1.4, 1.2 and 1. So I literally just take my 1.8 divided by the 2, my stock solution. That gives me a 0 0.9. How much is the volume that I want? I want 10 centimetres cubed. So therefore, I know I need to add 9 centimetres cubed into test tube number 1. And I do the same for each of them, work it out. And therefore that tells me how much of my stock solution and then how much of my distilled water do I need to add in. So in test tube number one, I needed nine centimeters cubed of my stock solution and only one centimeter cube of distilled water. With the second test tube, I need eight centimeters cubed of my stock solution and two centimeters cubed of my distilled water because I always want to have my set volume of 10 centimeters cubed. So it's really important when you are doing this that you know what your known volume is that you want to get at the end and how much you want to dilute the concentration by. So why are we doing this? Well, we do this because in a colorimeter, we want to create a calibration curve of known concentrations. So if we, 
do a serial dilution, we've got our known concentrations of our glucose solution. We can then use a colorimeter and graph out what the absorbance percentage was for each of those known concentrations. So I'm going to use the colorimeter again, this time to find the absorbance of an unknown sample. If I've got that unknown sample, I can then use the graph to find the concentration that corresponds. So if my unknown sample is 48% absorbance, I use that on the graph. That will therefore tell me that my glucose concentration for my unknown sample is 0.003 millimoles per centimetre cubed. How did I get my known concentration of glucose? I did a serial dilution. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on my like button and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my revision